Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna do a book haul. Once again, welcome or welcome back. I am so glad you decided to click on this video. Like I said, today I'm gonna do a book haul. I've been kind of saving up books for a little bit to do a nice big book haul and I do have quite a few. I have 15 books to haul today, so let's just get started so this doesn't end up being like an hour long. First is a book I purchased at Strand in New York City, and that is Death on Her Hands, sorry, Death in Her Hands by Otessa Moshfeg. So if you watch Michaela Reed's channel, she's read like every book by this author, and I just, I figured I would give it a try. We do share some pretty like similar opinions on a lot of stuff. And the book that I read last month, Black Sheep, was by her favorite author ever, Rachel Harrison. So I was like, I am gonna take another recommendation. This was a book that I actually started reading a couple pages in a bookstore like a few weeks ago, and I was like definitely into it. And I didn't buy it because I was just like, you don't need another book. But I bought it anyways a couple days ago when I was in New York, so whatever. I'm excited to read it. It is basically about a woman who finds a note in the woods that says her name was Magda. Nobody will ever know who killed her. It wasn't me. Here is her dead body. But there is no dead body. So it's like very like, wait, what? What's going on? And I think this is just kind of a weird like mystery where she's like trying to solve who's Magda? What's going on? Where is this body? And what am I supposed to do about it? but she's like old. I don't know. It just sounds really interesting. It sounds really fun. I think it's like kind of dark comedy in a way. So a triumphant blend of horror suspense and pitch black comedy. I don't know. I'm in. It sounds good to me. The next book is The Clementine Complex by Bob Mortimer. I guess this guy's like a comedian, but I don't know who he is. I think he's British because it, it just gives me those vibes. Anyways, this is about a man named Gary who goes to have a drink after work with his friend and his friend leaves early. And so he starts chatting to this woman in the pub, but then she leaves without saying goodbye and he doesn't even get her name. So he, all he has to go on is the book she was reading that was called The Clementine Complex is basically trying to track her down. But then his friend that he had met for a drink goes missing and he, really needs to find her, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, it sounds cute. I can't really tell if this is like a mystery-ish or like a romance. It seems like it might be some kind of hybrid of those, which I'm sold, like it sounds good. And like, look at this cute cover. There's like a cute little squirrel on the bike. I don't know, I love it. Sounds so cute. Looking forward to this one. The next one is Meet the Benedettos by Katie Catugno. This author has written a lot of YA books, but her adult debut was called Birds of California. And I think it came out like two years ago, but I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was a romance, but I don't know. It just, it was funny. It was cute. It was more of like a contemporary fiction with a romantic element if I, I don't know. So I think this will be kind of similar. It also, that book took place in Hollywood and like following some Hollywood starlets and well a hollywood star and a former hollywood star so this i think is going to be a little bit different this seems like it is a oh yes the kardashians meets pride and prejudice <laughs> so like i'm in it follows a family who is like on a reality show and there's five 20 something sisters who live in their parents crumbling mcmansion almost broke and teetering toward rock bottom the star of like what I'm assuming is like a Marvel franchise of sorts uh, moves into their neighborhood with his friend who um, went to Juilliard with him. So they, I mean, this literally sounds like Pride and Prejudice, like to a T, but I don't know. It sounds great. I mean, I'm in a modern day retelling of Pride and Prejudice. Listen, I'm not actually the biggest fan of Pride and Prejudice as like a story itself. I just think that I, unpopular opinion, you guys are gonna come for me, but I just don't like Jane Austen's writing. I think it's kind of bland and I just can't, I've tried so many times to get into it and like I can't, but I love all the Pride and Prejudice retellings and I love the movies. <laughs> so I don't know, I'm sorry. This sounds great, I'm really excited. I also forgot to mention that I was sent this book 
Meet the Benedettos by Harper Perennial. So thank you so much to them. And I was sent the Clementine Complex by Scout Press. So thank you to them for this copy. Another one I was sent was The Resort by Sarah Oaks. I believe that is how you say this name. And this is also an advanced reader's copy. Thank you to Sourcebooks Landmark for this. So I mean, you kind of can look at the cover and feel like you can get the vibe of what this is about. But I'm hoping that I like this one more than I've liked other books with similar vibes. This says, welcome to paradise. We hope you survive your stay. There are three rules to follow during a vacation at the famous Koh Sang Resort. One, leave the past behind. When Cass sets foot on the coast of Thailand's world-famous party island, she's searching for an escape. With dark secrets following her every mood, Ko Sang becomes the perfect place to hide. Two, be careful of whom you trust. Now, years later, Cass is a local dive instructor alongside the Permanents, a group of expats who have claimed the island as their own. The Permanents don't linger on who they were before the island, simply because, like Cass, they all have something to outrun. If someone discover three, <laughs> if someone discovers who you really are, run. But suddenly, a dive student is found dead and paradise comes crashing down. Because this isn't the first mysterious death on the island, and it won't be the last. Someone knows who Cass is, and they're ready to make sure justice is finally served. So actually, that sounds different than a lot of this vibe books. I'm, in I'm into it. That sounds cool, about, like, a dive instructor and that, like, it's about a bunch of expats that live in Thailand and... Yeah, so I think I'm going to be into this. This doesn't come out until February, but I am going to read it soon probably because it sounds good and interesting and kind of creepy for Halloween. The next book is Evil Eye by Ataf Room. This is by the same author as A, a Woman Is No Man, which is not a book that I've read, but I've like literally had library holds like going with it forever and I just never actually check it out and read it. But I've heard it's fantastic. So Definitely one I want to check out, but I thought I would go ahead and get this. This is my book of the month pick for September. This is about a Palestinian American woman who lives in North Carolina and she's, you know, highly educated. She's an art teacher at a local college. She's a wife and a mother, but she's kind of unhappy, angry some of the time. And there's an incident at the college she teaches at, which threatens her job and her peace of mind, and her mom suggests that a family curse could be to blame, but Yara, the main character, doesn't believe in superstitions, but she's still kind of wondering, and she basically has to, you know, confront her past to move on, which is a type of book that I just think should be its own genre, and I'm here for it. So that sounds like it's going to be a good one. I hopefully will get to this soon. I've been really trying to keep up with my book of the month books, like the month or the month after I get them. So I want to get to this in the rest of this month. The so. next book that I want to haul is The Many Lives of Mama Love by Lara Love Harden. This was a book of the month pick in August, but I just did it as an add-on for my September box. So this is a memoir about a just regular middle-class white woman soccer mom who has a heroin addiction and I guess how she overcomes that and just like generally how she she ends up going to prison I think and how that goes for her and how she reinvents herself as a ghostwriter after she gets out of prison but her shame is following her around and such so yeah, I've seen um, mostly good reviews. I've seen a few that were very critical about the way she doesn't address her innate privilege by being a white woman and like that that could be kind of frustrating. And I definitely think that will frustrate me if I see that in this book. So we will see. I am still looking forward to reading it because I mean, even if it's annoying that that happens, I think it'll be an interesting story. I mean kind of crazy. <laughs> the next book is The Field of Wrongdoing by Lily St. Germain. This was sent to me by Level 4 Press. I haven't heard of this book but I was offered this copy and I decided to take one up on it because it sounded really interesting. So here is the synopsis. The smallest towns hold the darkest secrets and the people you least suspect are the ones you should fear the most. 
When Cassie's friend disappears, Cassie knows all too well the tragic end Jennifer has probably met. After all, Cassie is the one who found the last murdered girl in the field on her boyfriend Leo's property nine years ago. She never believed the love of her life was capable of such a brutal act, not even after Leo went to prison for an unrelated crime. But now he's back, released on parole, and another girl has gone missing. So, I mean, not a whole lot given away in the synopsis, but I'm always down for, like, a missing girl, a boyfriend we didn't know. Kind of, if you've read um, Jar of Hearts by Jennifer... Who wrote that book? Jennifer Hillier, that's who wrote it. It kind of sounds like that a little bit, like a um, boyfriend, ex-boyfriend who like harmed the friend, but like, do we believe it? Like, so anyways, yeah, I think that will be a good read. Definitely a good one for Halloween time. Like spooky scary. Another book that was sent to me by Level 4 Press is Scavenger Hunt by Danny Lamia. So this sounds interesting and cool, like a kind of fun twist on maybe a book that I've seen before. Caitlin Nilo is rich, driven, and ruthless. As CEO of her father's game company, she made Nilo Corporation a worldwide success, but at a cost. Along the way, she lost her marriage, and she rarely sees her twin daughters. Her job is her life, and it's the best game she's ever played. After her eccentric father unexpectedly passes away, Caitlin is stunned when she learns that instead of leaving the company to her, he has chosen to make his five heirs compete in one last game. A scavenger hunt with a $20 billion inheritance waiting at the end. But it turns out that losing a life in, in this game is more than symbolic. When a live video shows the brutal murder of one of Caitlyn's greedy brothers, the surviving heirs discover a terrifying truth. Someone is controlling the game. Soon, old secrets and sibling rivalry take a dark turn as Caitlyn and the others confront the demons of their past in their search for clues. What began as a family scavenger hunt has been twisted into a maniacal death trap from which the evil game master offers no escape. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> maybe this isn't like other books that I have read. This is, sounds dark as hell. I was thinking this was going to be like Inheritance Games, which is, if you don't know, a YA book and similar like sounding sort of situation, but like not like this. So we will see. This sounds like it's going to be kind of graphic and gory and kind of screwed up. So we will see how that goes. Okay, another book that Level 4 Press sent me this one is like really getting me. It's called Emily by Eden Francis Compton and Rachel Flannery. So this concept is interesting and very different. Teddy is a world famous playwright in the mold of David Mamet, but for the past year he's been stuck. An assignment to write a play about Emily Dickinson should have been simple, but instead it has turned into pure obsession. Then one night she comes to life in his office like magic, seducing him, torturing him, begging him to uncover the shocking secret about her life that she has woven between the lines of her text. And tonight he's finally figured her out. So why is Teddy holding a loaded gun to his head? Stumbling in and out of reality will experience the magic of Emily Dickinson's words as they lead Teddy on a harrowing journey that will change his life for eternity. So I don't actually know a ton about Emily Dickinson and I mean obviously I know that she's a poet from from yesteryear but that's kind of it. So this sounds dark and creepy and kind of like ghosty spooky. So all three of these books sound interesting and sound like something I will enjoy and yeah I am definitely looking forward to reading these. They seem very dark and creepy. The next book that I got from Knopf Books is The Unsettled by Ayana Mathis. I've actually am about like halfway through this book now and I'm really enjoying it especially because it is set in Philadelphia where I live so that is always fun. This book is set in the 80s and it's about a black woman and her son who find themselves homeless after she leaves her husband who had abused her. So they end up in a homeless shelter and she's like, oh, this is not for me. Like, I don't belong here. And so after a few months there, she decides to take her son and move back to her hometown in Alabama. It's also 1985 um, in this book. Oh, I think it's 85. It's the 80s. So just something to keep in mind. Um, so they end up moving back to her hometown in Bonaparte, Alabama, a city that was like very much owned by black folks who were freed slaves and uh 
the land that they were given have they've been like having to protect from developers and like white people basically who want to take it and you know it was just like a community of like black business owners and families and basically there's only five of them left who are keeping this enriched black community of rot alive and so it all kind of fits together it does make more sense in the con in the context of the book in addition her her son's father is like a leader in the black panther movement and her mother is like a little kooky so yeah there's a lot to unpack here and i'm really enjoying it so far like i said i'm about halfway through and I am enjoying it. The next book is Moving On Doesn't Mean Letting Go by Gina Maffa. So this is a book that is, oh, A Modern Guide to Navigating Grief. I was sent this by Balance Books. I think that's an imprint of Hachette. So this is a book that I am definitely saving. If you're new to my channel, um, welcome. But also I am I am currently dealing with my father having terminal cancer, so I am like sort of preparing myself for grief. I mean, I'm definitely grieving in a different way right now, but like I know that this is coming essentially. So I think this book will be something I'll, I'll probably hold on to and read a little later, hopefully a lot later, but you know, it's definitely a book that I have a purpose in mind for and like a time frame, I guess. But I mean, I think it's just sort of a self help book about grief and how we all deal with it differently. And I don't know how you can move on with your life without negating your feelings and that sort of thing. So I'm looking forward to reading it. But like, also not really, if that makes sense. The next book is The One That Got Away by Charlotte Rickson. First of all, this cover, right? So cool. I love the like gold and silver kind of like foiled design. Anyways, this was sent to me by St. Martin's Press. So thank you to them for this one. So here is the synopsis. 2000. Benjamin's world is turned upside down the night he meets Clara. Instinctively, he knows that they are meant for each other, but a devastating mistake made during their last night at university will take their lives in different directions. 20 years later, Clara has a high profile job and a handsome husband. But despite the trappings of success, she isn't happy and she knows that a piece of her heart still belongs to Benjamin, the boy she fell in love with years earlier. The boy whose life she fears she's ruined. When a bombing is reported in the city where they first met, Clara is pulled back to a place she has tried not to remember and the first love she could never forget. Searching for Benjamin, Clara is forced to confront the events that tore them apart, but is it too late to put right what went wrong? Across the miles and spanning decades, the one that got away is a sweeping emotional tale of growing up, growing apart, the people who first steal our hearts and the surprising winding roads that love can take us on. So yeah, this seems like a an epic love story. And I think I could go either way on this kind of book. So we will see what I think about it when I get to it. I do love the cover a lot though. I mean, it sounds good, but I feel like in certain books where it's like we fell in love and then we were apart for many many years like sometimes I have a hard time being like okay but like literally why did you stop talking to each other so there's gonna be a good reason so I'm probably gonna be really critical so stay tuned for that the next book is who are we now by Lauren Chamberlain this was sent to me by Dutton books so thank you to Dutton for this copy I think this sounds really good this is like a friendship book and it like spans several years so it follows a group of four folks who are best friends and it's 2006 and it is the eve of their college graduation and so obviously you know in college you think that you're gonna be best friends with your best friends forever i mean i guess high school too and you know it, whatever they can't imagine anything that would make them change so all of them are creatives but two of them decide to get more stable jobs and a more traditional career path and two of them bet on themselves and go after their their passion and I guess over time like these little forks in the road kind of make them into different people and just it seems like how their relationships all evolve as they get older and I really enjoy this kind of book it's every chapter or no each year of their lives 
uh, since their graduation in 2006 has is narrated by a different character which I think is really cool and kind of seeing how things evolve from like different characters perspectives like from year to year I feel like that would be a really interesting and different way of telling the story I think I will enjoy that aspect and it seems that at the end or there there is some sort of tragic turn of events that will pull them all back together so We'll see what that is, but it sounds really good. I am definitely looking forward to reading this one. Next is Rouge by Mona Awad. This book was sent to me by Simon & Schuster, so thank you so much to them for this copy. So I don't know too, too much about this. I have read this author's other book called Bunny. I liked it, but I also thought it was super, super fucking weird. So we will see what I think of this. I think that's sort of what she is known for, is like weird horror that's like, super quirky. So this follows a woman named Belle who is obsessed with skin and skincare videos. Her estranged mother dies mysteriously and she kind of finds herself back in her mother's house and dealing with all of her debt and just questions about her death. Apparently a strange woman appears at the funeral and offers her a clue about her mother's demise followed by a cryptic video about a transformative spa experience. So then Belle is kind of like lured into this world of I guess, beauty, culty beauty stuff. And then she's gonna find out kind of more about what happened to her mom. This is kind of uh, billed as Snow White meets Eyes Wide Shut, which is a combination I never thought that I would think about in the same sentence. So definitely sounds unique, sounds cool. I mean, I'm gonna go in with an open mind. Uh, like I said, Bunny was weird, but I, I thought it was, I mean, it was like off the wall weird, but I did enjoy it. So hopefully this will be the same, but maybe I'll enjoy it even more. And the last book I am hauling in this video is The Fury by Alex Michaelides. This I am very excited about. This is an advanced reader copy. Thank you to Celadon Books. I am so excited to read this. This is from the author of The Silent Patient and The Maidens. This is his third book, and I think it sounds really, really good. So it says, this is a tale of murder, or maybe that's not quite true. At its heart, it's a love story, isn't it? Lana Farrer is a reclusive ex-movie star and one of the most famous women in the world. Every year, she invites her closest friends to escape the English weather and spend Easter on her idyllic private Greek island. I tell you this because you may think you know the story. You probably read about it at the time. It caused a real stir in the tabloids, if you remember. It had all the necessary ingredients for a press sensation, a celebrity, a private island cut off by the wind, and a murder. We found ourselves trapped by there overnight. Old friendships concealed hatred and a desire for revenge. What followed was a game of cat and mouse, a battle of wits full of twists and turns building to an unforgettable climax. The night ended in violence and death. But who am I? If you know what I'm thinking about after that, then you get me. My name is Elliot Chase and I'm going to tell you a story unlike you've ever heard. So I, I really enjoy books that like sort of talk to the reader. So I think I'm going to enjoy how this is written. But yeah, it sounds interesting. And I really like the cover with the like evil eye thing, which is kind of funny because it like goes with the other book that I had in this haul. But I really enjoy The Silent Patient. I didn't read The Maidens because it got such mixed reviews, but I do know a lot of people still liked it. So I'm looking forward to going in to this one with an open mind and seeing if I like it. Whew. So those are some of the books that I have hauled recently. I have a lot to read. I certainly do. So I hope to get to some of these soon and I would love to review them for you. So if there's any of these that you would like to see me read and review first, let me know in the comments because I am always open to someone else making the choices for me of what to read next. If you like this video and give it a thumbs up and I would love it if you would subscribe and I am so grateful to you for watching this video and thankful for every single view that I get. So thank you for supporting my channel and I will see you in the next